Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. So I wasn't planning on making this video, but I woke up very early this morning and I got an email titled Adcoder Beginner Contest 196. That email, to me, was nothing more than junk mail that I'd usually open and ignore. But this time it was different. A few days earlier, I registered for Adcoder, which is a competitive programming platform as part of the actions I'm taking in my journey to become a mediocre competitive programmer. So then I was like, how about I take this contest and get a feel of what it's about? Then I looked at the time that the contest was going to be held, saw that it was 8 a.m. local time. Okay, my bad. I'm going to go back to bed now. I am not motivated enough to wake up at sunrise and jump into some recreational coding competition. So I went back to bed, but I couldn't stop thinking about it. And as always, whenever I'm faced with such dilemma, on whether or not to take action in something, I always ask myself, what's stopping you from doing it right now? And if I couldn't come up with an answer, I just do the thing. So in this case, I asked myself, what's stopping you from participating in this contest? I could not come up with a concrete answer, and as you've read from the title of this video, here we are. Hey everybody. This is Adcoder Beginner Contest 196. First time I'm taking this, so let's see what happens. The first question was a freebie. The question was to find the maximum difference between two numbers in independent ranges. So I thought, to find the maximum range, we can compute all possible values of the two numbers and calculate the difference and return the maximum difference. And as an amateur lead coder, I immediately started writing a for loop. But a few seconds into the for loop, I got back to my senses and realized that I have a computer science degree, plus humans have gone through 4 billion years of evolution, and this is not the stone age, so I ought to do better. Because the two numbers are integers in a range, and we already know the bounds of their range, all we need to do is subtract the smallest possible value of one number from the largest possible value of the other number. So I did that, submitted it, and you guessed it, it was accepted. At this point, I was feeling myself. No wonder it's called at code beginner contest. I thought, but I was wrong. The next question was a little tougher. The prompt was quite simple. Given a number, round the number down and print the answer. This is super easy. I can simply print math.floor, right? 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 No. You see, with competitive programming, the inputs are always unconventional and the constraints are really tough. Method floor easily works for integers in the range that Java accepts, which is 2 billion something something something. Hmm. You know what? Let's Google it. Yeah, negative 2 billion something to positive 2 billion something. With large numbers, the floor function cannot work. So instead of reading the input as an integer, which would throw a number format exception, I read the input as a string, and if there is a decimal point, I split the string at the decimal point, and because we're rounding down, I just return the left side of the split. And if we don't have a decimal point, I just print the value as it is. Awesome! This was a win, thankfully. Excluding the fact that I spent an awful lot of time figuring out that I had to add an escape character in front of the decimal point in the regular expression that I pass into the split function. But it's a win nonetheless, huh? Little did I know that this was going to be the end of my winning streak. The third question was a ridiculously simple question with ridiculously tough input constraints. You're given a range, and you should count the number of values in that range that have an even number of digits, and if you split the value in half. The two halves should be equal. On phase value, it was simple. I just had to iterate through the range, count the values that met the condition, and return the count. So I did that and submitted the answer and passed a few test cases, but oh man, runtime error, time limit exceeded, what? I looked at the upper bound for the range and it turns out it's this number. Yeah, I don't even know how to say that number. Is it trillion? Is it quadrillion? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Point is, Java cannot run a for loop for that many instances, at least not in a regular environment. So I spent the next hour or so coming up with innovative fixes 
which unfortunately did not work. I noticed that for every range increase in a multiple of 100, there is this pattern and the number of values that meet the condition. I tried to hard code the pattern, but that works best if we get a range that's exactly these numbers. If we get a range that's far from these numbers, we'd have to compute the difference and Java doesn't like that. So this was the end of the road for me. I was done. As always, I know there's going to be a very, very simple and intuitive solution to this question, but I couldn't come up with it at the time. Sorry, I filled humanity and sent us back a couple of years of evolution. Please love me. Please love me. If you have a solution, drop the link in the comments. I'm also going to look up how to solve it later. And as always, my solutions will be up on GitHub, link in the description. Like and subscribe for more content like this. Let me know if you like this format of videos that I'm experimenting with, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.